underlying rationale for the exhibition was really to challenge the fact that there's such emphasis on identity politics at the moment, that people are really being divided, really being polarised on perceptions of identities having common objectives, having common values, and really trying to challenge that. It allowed artists from different provinces, neighbouring countries, to come together to try and find common ground because it opens platforms for relationships and that will also inform how the art is created. One has to find that sense of unique identity within Africa as a continent. Sometimes we are too prematurely exposed to the global context of what is happening and we're not really focusing on who we are as a people. In the context of South Africa as an evolving democracy, and then in Africa at large, we should have more engagements. I mean, if you look at the list of artists that we are exhibited, we get Natalie Bikora, for example, who's born in Gabon, grew up between France, Germany. So that for me was really interesting to sort of look at who's a citizen and who's a resident, you know, who's African, who's not African, who determines that. It's creating that space for a convergence of voices from very different spaces. That's where identity politics does come in a lot because we're getting exhibitions that are closing down saying this is a black artist's exhibition or this is a young artist's exhibition or this is a woman's exhibition. It's not that those aren't necessary or important but all too often there's this assumption that you can't speak on something unless it directly affects you in the way that you can claim it as yours. Combining a visit to a mine with other images that talk back to the above below social strata. The resource curse actually refers to people of extreme poverty who live above extreme wealth and it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. We are complicit in mining. Mining's everything and everywhere. And then other work which are dealing with security and we how we imprison ourselves. We live behind burglar bars. Every day I'm trying to go out of the house, I have to think of how do I lock my house, how to have security. It actually makes our life very uncomfortable and, and we all, our society, I feel we all imprison ourselves, you know. It starts from the journey, makes one to become a migrant and the situation that they go through, so I try to investigate politics because that's what makes one become a migrant. I do abstract, semi-abstract work. Very much inspired by just the movement of people, crowds. My work is about unity. All we need to do is put aside Russia and tribal issues and be one. I'm from South Coast on a small missionary school in Fume. When King Shaga the Great was on top of the mountain, of our village. He commanded his soldiers to not run away like from their enemies. And that's in Zulu called Ifa Um, which means die where you were standing. When the missionaries came, they failed to pronounce the name Ifa Um, and then it ended up called Infume. So now, my village now is called Infume Mission. The work that I have on that side, criticizing the inhumane process that are involved in the social construction of our communities from lower class to upper class. I challenge this ideological portrayal of labor work as the symbol of progress and prosperity on my country, while for me it has become a symbol of struggle for environmental justice and the exploitation of the dignity of the identities of labor workers. The work I'm showing is called Mirafonics which is a work of soundings, better soundings. It's a tool for interrogating and also you know, creating access to alternative indigenous knowledges, or remixing or playing with the soundings so as to expand their meaning. Looking at objects as, as something that carries a social memory. The collection of voices that can be heard in the performance is old phonographic recordings of colonial soldiers that were in French and British colonies and were prisoners in German 
colonial camps. William Duggan believed that in order to create a museum of world culture, it could only include men, because only men could be producers of world culture. And he believed that the women could not transmit that. So there are a lot of these recordings of women are missing or destroyed. And my question was, where does the tongue of the woman sit into and how is her transmission carried over time if this invisibility is so oppressing? Beyond Binaries is a curated exhibition by the Bala Curatorial Collective. 